Hi, I'm Ray Young. I'm an emeritus professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I'm continuing with my lectures on the theories of smell. Now, last time we talked about the molecular structure theory of smell, and we noted some problems with this theory. For example, the musk molecule, the musk smell, uh, is given off by a wide variety of molecules of different structure, from elaborate ring structures to the nitro musks. And also, the almond smell uh, is produced by benzaldehyde as well as cyanide, two very distinct structures. So the a vibrational theory is an alternate theory for the smell. It was originally proposed in 1938 by Dyson, and then uh, Wright and Malone also were proponents of this theory. And most recently, Luca Turin has uh, presented evidence for this theory. And I became familiar with uh, Luca through the book The Emperor of Scent, writ written by Chandler Burr, who met Luca by chance on a train, found him interesting, and wrote a book about his work. Also, uh, Luca has published the book The Secret of Scent, uh, pr about his theories of smell, and also has given a TED Talk. Now, if you look at the bottom left, we all know that molecules vibrate. Uh, shown here is a water molecule, oxygen, and two hydrogens. And you can see, uh, if we consider the bonds uh, between the oxygen and hydrogen as springs, they can have a variety of motions or uh, of the uh, vibrational motions. These can be stretching, twisting, rocking, and wagging. And these been, can be picked up on a uh, spectroscope, spectrometer. Now, Luca emphasized his uh, theory by showing the molecule of ethanol and ethane thiol, both of which have the same structure, essentially. Ethanol have a, a very pleasant alcohol smell. Ethane thiol, of course, is our rotten eggs, very, uh, very poor smell. Um, but, you know, having the same shape uh, means they should have the same smell. However, you can see the difference is, is, is in the vibrational frequencies where the OH stretches at 3600 wave numbers and the SH stretch is at 2570 wave numbers. So the distinction here is a vibrational distinction, not a molecular structure distinction. And similarly, if we show this for our electronic space filling models, which are the same, uh, st same structures in a, shown in a different way for the hexene all, which smells of cut grass, and the hexene thiol, which again smells of rotten eggs, and they have the same uh, basic structure, but a distinctly different vibrational uh, pattern, uh, the SH and OH stretch. Now, the pr one of the problems is that we have to decide how our nose is, is de detecting molecular vibrations. Uh, we know in the laboratory we have a, a large uh, spectrometer with diffraction gratings and mirrors and so on, and we can get a spectra of a molecule uh, of each of those. Uh, molecular vibrations. And it was proposed that the electron tunneling is the mechanism by which we uh, detect smells. Now, uh, John Lamb and Robert Yaklovich uh, from the Ford Motor Company were studying uh, electron tunneling in the 1960 between metal oxide metal plates. And they noted uh, these kinks in the voltage and they uh, attributed to this to uh, organic molecules, and they actually were able to obtain a spectra of the molecules as a result of this uh, inelastic tunneling. So let's look at elastic tunneling first, which uh, you have the gap, the electrons can jump a gap, but only at equal energies, which they did not have for these, uh, these plates. So they found that the presence of these contaminant, organic contaminants in the plates allowed the uh, a tunneling to occur, but as an inelastic tunneling. In other words, the, if the molecule had the right vibration, it could absorb that energy and the electron could uh, jump the gap, giving off a phonon of excitation. And this is the idea of the uh, electron tunneling in the inelastic mode. And shown here is, is uh, electrons donate to the molecule exciting the vibrational mode and creating that new tunneling pathway. So you have a donor electron with the odorant and then the acceptor electron uh, as the olfactory receptor. And this is uh, very plausible in terms of biology, uh, so it, is, it could be applicable to uh, the detection of uh, odors in our nose. So let's look at some of the uh, evidence uh, supplied, and this is mostly, as I mentioned, from Luca Turin. Uh, 
he d did some calculations and, and determined that uh, borane compounds uh, should show the same uh, uh, vibrational modes as sulfur. And uh, we can see that methylmercaptan and skunks, all the thiols, have that rotten egg smell, uh, negative smell. And it was found that the decaborane also uh, gave off the same smell. Uh, and it also showed the same molecular vibrations at 2550 uh, wave number, centimeters to the minus one. So this is evidence of, of the molecular vibration theory. Uh, dissimilar molecules giving the same smell. Uh, also, smells can uh, be very different with nearly identical shapes. And he showed this with the uh, ferrocene and the nicolocene. And uh, they have very similar shapes with just a different uh, metal in the center of the molecule as shown. The ferrocene molecule is slightly tipped in the diagram, but it smells uh, spicy camphorous, whereas the nicolocene smells oily. But they have different vibrations. The vibration of ferrocene at 478 and of nicolocene at 375. Another uh, piece of evidence provided is uh, the duration. Now, uh, what you can do is you can replace hydrogens in a molecule with the deuterium. Now, hydrogen has one proton. The deuterium has a proton and a neutron. It's considered heavy, uh, heavy, uh, heavy hydrogen. But uh, and this causes uh, dramatic changes in the vibrational patterns. Uh, with the CH shown uh, at three thousand whereas the CD stretch is at 2200. Now, th this, uh, and this, as a result of this, you get a difference in the odor of the molecule. Uh, sh even though the shape is a, a, a exactly the same uh, for cyclopentadecanone, the deuterated molecule gives a nutty, roasted, burnt smell, whereas the uh, hydrogen uh, molecule gives the musky smell. So again, showing that the difference in vibration causes the difference in smell, at least for this particular case. One caveat is that molecules uh, with only eight hydrogens or left, less did not show this uh, change in smell. Another uh, approach was, uh, was using uh, fruit flies, which have a, a very sensitive uh, smell it's found. And the deuteration of the odorant uh, with the isotope of hydrogen, again with the heavy hydrogen, and they found that the, the uh, fruit flies could clearly differentiate the uh, isotopic odorants. And they could be conditioned to avoid the, the common or deuterated isotopes. Uh, this is interesting that they can distinguish this. And they can exhibit selective aversion to unrelated mo molecules with a vibrational mode in the CD stretch region. So these very sensitive uh, insects were able to distinguish uh, these, mo these deuterated molecules, meaning they were detecting vibrational modes uh, in their sen sensory organs, sensory receptors. Okay, we'd like to present one other what is a dilemma in, in terms of these uh, theories of smell, and that's the dilemma of, uh, dilemma of molecular mirror images. Now, many molecules have mirror images, including uh, 400 odorants. And I've shown on the left what we mean by a mirror image. Uh, if you would put a molecule in a mirror, you could, you could get one side, a left and right side. Now, you can, this is analogous to a, uh, having a pair of gloves. If you, you, you try to put your right hand glove on your left hand, it doesn't work. So these molecules are, are different spatially so that they are distinct. And in terms of drug, uh, drug therapy, uh, it's very important the uh, mirror images or the enantiomers of the left or right can have profoundly different uh, influences in terms of drugs. And it turns out there's influence in terms of odors as well. Shown here are two molecules, uh, carvone, uh, R-carvone, and S-carvone, as they're designated as the two enantiomers. The R-carvone has a spearmint smell, where the S-carvone has a caraway smell. Now, if shape matters, all these uh, enantiomo pairs should smell different. But if vibration dominates, they should smell the same. And lo and behold, of the 400 odorants, 60% smell alike, 
and 40% are different. So this doesn't present a dominant uh, evidence for either theory. However, uh, let's talk a little bit about the receptor molecule. Shown on the, the, the left and the, in the white is a, a spindle, uh, which, I've, uh, which I'm uh, using as a uh, molecule that goes into a receptor. And the long tube structures are what I consider the receptor. And you can see as the spindle molecule moves into the receptor, it, it has some flexibility. And we know that mucous membrane that we talked about earlier, which contains the olfactory protein receptor, has some flexibility and the molecule moves in and uh, uh, moves around in the structure, orients itself, and then is uh, expelled. Now uh, on the right I've shown a more realistic uh, example of the seven-fold helix, helical structure of the olfactory receptor protein with a molecule uh, present in it. and It, it has some uh, possible movement in it. So. Jennifer Brooks at the University of College of London has proposed that enantiomers only smell different when the molecules have some type of flexibility. So that she's uh, indicating that flexibility inside that receptor is important for the distinction of these molecules. But then Luca Turin uh, suggested that by adding a carbonyl compound that he, it, it, that it would uh, change the smell or bring the smell to make them similar in smell. And uh, he did this by adding pentanone and he, the r carbone or the uh, left molecule, uh, which smelled of spearmint, was transformed to the smell of the molecule on the right, the s carbone of caraway. And he indicated that this was uh, evidence of the uh, flexibility that, that the molecules could be transformed and they were somewhat locked in place. Okay, uh, it's a little complicated to explain, but uh, it's important to note. So, but we have problems with the vibration theory. It doesn't account for all the differences in smell, and it's not been uh, broadly used for prediction of odors. So in the next uh, presentation, I'll talk about another uh, theory of smell, the combinatorial ototope theory, and I'll summarize what we know uh, at this point. Thank you.